This is a painting I did a few years ago now, found on my, uh, on my blog. So I thought I'd uh, try and do this one again. So I'm using the, the big, well, the large run ransom hike, which is a uh, 45mm, if you see it at the side, I'm not sure which one it is. It comes in about four sizes, you've got the small, medium, large and extra large. I use the uh, the large one right now. First thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to do a, a copy of that painting. It's just going to be a loose, just a loose impression. I don't really, I don't do copies at all. I feel very, to make you feel restrictive, and you, you can't paint with freedom. It's like people have asked me in the past if I'll do commissions, but. I just don't like them because you feel under pressure to make the uh, the painting look too much like the, the reference photo. I, I just tighten up, you know. I, mean, I couldn't paint it all, it's just bang it in like that. You can just, oh no, I just don't like it. Anyway, going back to this, uh, got the sky here. Now we've got a few little. Oh, dash down a bit more. A few little clouds up there. Can't really see them against the rest of it. But then down there, we've got like a like a distant land. And then in front of that, I'm so just, just going to clean the brush and then take the excess off on my tea towel. I always carry my left hand because it does carry a lot of water. This brush. Just getting a lizard crimson, raw sienna. And just there, we've got some land, it's a little bit closer. And I just sort of disappeared behind some trees that are going to go there. And then over on the left hand side. We've got some more land that sort of comes down like that. Little, little tray, little, little trunk coming out of it. The paper's stretching a little bit, I'm just going to pull it tight so it's laid into the board. And then I might have to give it a quick dry before I go any further. bone dry just as long as it was dry than it was just lets the paint go on a bit better a bit stronger now first bit of trees I'm just gonna up the bit hillside there so I'm just gonna whisk around this palette raw sienna these in crimson Ultramarine, something like so. It's going to end up coming down. Just getting a sort of lie of the land there. Let's pop this tree. Uh, first thing, let's do this new so one's there. Let's do it right, right up to the top. Just using the corner of the brush. Let's see what they look like. 
Like in each of the trunks. Might do some with the little brush as well afterwards. Sitting on there. Yeah, if I just switch to the uh, just to the flat brush, three quarter inch flat brush. I mean, just over here, we've got. Pieces. Like a big piece coming down, something like that. And then we go. I just use plenty of water on that. There is. Imagine the lights are going, I'm just going to pull down, just going to pull, pull a shadow down. I'm always try and strengthen it afterwards. And then, just a make. Just here, there's a got another tree. Um, I don't really like the way the tree trunk is in the uh, in the original. So I'm just going to do this one. It's a little bit different. Just using a sort of chisel edge of the height brush, just to bash in the skeleton of the thing. As it dries, the paint will go on thicker and thicker. Right, let's put some little branches on. So I'm just using a little brush now. Plenty of water. Some of, the, some of the smaller branches. You need a lot more water. Obviously, this is a lot smaller brush, so the water runs out. Paint will run out pretty quick. You have to keep reloading it. Oh, that's how I'll do for that. Whoop. And then if I'll just use, sorry, I'll just clean the brush, squeeze the water out of it and then just dry it on the tea towel, scuff the airs up everywhere. Just, just tap into those colours. transfer them. because the brush is dry it's not going to come off there's not going to be much going onto the paper so you're not going to block it in too much so you can kind of see all the way through the tree it's like a sort of safety mechanism the, the drier the brush is the less paint's going to come off so the less mistakes you're going to make If it's too dry, you might need to just, just wet it all slightly. You can see, you see how dry this palette is, there's no water swishing about on it. I can, I can, I can just bash it in like that and only a little bit. brush is going to stay fairly dry. 
and it's not gonna uh, I'm not gonna make too much from this. So, more colour on there. These are in crimson, pines grey. Liking that slightly. Painted over these, so I'll just pop them back in. side so back to the little brush and that's just coming from here and just flicks out like that Same thing again, just right on the tea towel and just go into those colours and just bash it in. That's all there is to it really. Now there's like a slope, there's, there's a hill here in the foreground. So just to sort of define it a bit better. What I did in the original was just putting this pathway around here. You don't keep dry for us. It's a grass sticking out from the snow. Um, oh, there's no figure in the original, but I'm, I'm going to put one in. Put one in there. I'm going to give them a, a sort of a lizard. Stuck the shit, stick the shadows in. So it's a bit of Payne's grey, this is in crimson, ultramarine. Right then, now where's the light coming from? Um, which way should we do the shadow? It does, it's not very clear in the uh, in the original. Um, I'm going to pretend that they're coming from this direction because you can cast them stronger. I think actually in the painting they're coming that way. So I think it will work better if the light's over there and you've got the shadows coming off these trees and things like that. Something like that. I did do, I've done them the wrong way on there, did not I? Let's just pop some of there.
sky and then down and I'm just going to stick my nose. Right, let's see what that looks like with the uh, main sun. So there's our painting mounted. So if we look at the original, in terms of the composition it's, it's pretty similar. I think the main difference, I've tried to make this more of a sort of shadowy area with these, um, tried to get some strong shadows coming across the foreground. But the sky, predominantly a lizarding crimson, ultramarine, but the pines grey and raw sienna in there as well. And then we've got this sort of distant, most distant land there, to put in the same colour so as far away as you can possibly get it to look. So you put it in when it was still wet so you get this really soft edge. A few sort of lit areas there, sort of unpainted paper to suggest where the sort of light's coming through the shadows. This tree, just use the hake just to build in the main sort of skeleton and then some dry brushwork just to suggest all the leaves. As dry as you can get it really, just so that it doesn't block it in too much and you can see the sky behind it. Got a little figure there trying to make his way through the gate and these posts work their way into the shadowy area. And then when I've put these shadows in, I've I've just done it quickly so that I've, it sort of hasn't painted it all in so this looks like the gaps between the, the, the trees and the branches. I hope you like that, thanks for watching. Any questions please ask. Keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.